Today we're going to talk to Randy. Pleasure to see you, Eivor. What happened yesterday? You and Sigurd disappeared during the feast. And when he returned, he went straight to our room without a word. We talked for a time. I asked many questions, but got few answers. I wish I could say more. Do you think Sigurd knows? About us? I don't think so. He would have said something. Sigurd wants to blame me for every mishap that has befallen him, but gives me no credit for his rescue. I don't understand. Yet he does speak with you. With me, he has gone totally silent. So, what now? This is for Sussex. He burned it to the ground to save one man. Yet he is barely the man we were searching for. Quite so. Now what? He didn't know what. I want to see the Alliance map. What of Essex? We received a summons from the Elderman and his Lady of Colchester, requesting you specifically for a matter of great secrecy. Foreboding. And who is this Elderman? One of King Alfred's lackeys? According to my scouts, he is a man who cares more for his own indulgences than the safety of his people. Approach with care. We'll leave at once. An alliance in Essex would be invaluable, but go with caution. Oh no. Where are they? Avon, have you seen Wallace? No. something forged good day Boy. is Gunnar about or did he leave and not mention it my name is Rima and Gunnar is a good friend of mine ask me to run his shop while he's away it's good to meet you and strange to see Gunnar away from his forge well as far as I know he's got a very compelling and beautiful reason for his absence so here I am well if Gunnar has faith in you I do too then I say you have fine taste have a look at what I've got. May I see your stores? Ah, uh, yeah. That be all. I will see you later, friend. Farewell, Eivor. Eivor is here. Ah, it's Eivor. Come in from the slaughter. I would like to see what you have in stock. I'm practically giving it away. Pa 
affection, and I mean that. Tempted? Smart decision, Eivor. Uh. Go on, give it a try. Use it wisely. Then... I must be on my way now. Goodbye. Always a pleasure, Eivor. What have you got for me today? You should get that. Honestly. Nothing else? No. I must take my leave. So long. Bye-bye. I hope to see you soon. brought something for you. Uh... Nope. Thanks, 
capture the fish. Yeah. I have to go. See you soon. Farewell, Avor. Farewell. It is as if a thousand devils grind their pointy teeth. You do not appreciate it. Right. Art. What? Not 
getting in here. Perhaps because you have drunk the barrel dry? Damn beer stand. His household is as poorly run as his land. Estrid is a good wife. Far better than he deserves. You would say that, Adrian. Lord. Ah, a heroic looking Dane in our midst. I'm looking for Birsten, the elderman of the Shire. Our lord is not at home, but his wife is receiving visitors upstairs in her usual fashion. If you speak with her, Pass on that we've run out of ale. You would say that, Adrian. Your yeah, wife yeah. acts like a sow in a skirt. My sweater runner is a worthy woman, you coxcomb. But she's an excellent cook. With a fine nose for truffles. If Birsten does not return soon, wine will not be the only thing spilled upon his floors. Now, gentlemen, everyone is fractious with this waiting. Let us be civil at least. Birsten's things disrespect you, lady. Sour ale in the air. You! Guards will come at one cry from me! Sheathe your blade, lady. I'm Eivor of the Raven Clan, here at your husband's request. Another Dane. I am Estrid, wife of the Lord of Essex. As you may have heard, my lord is not at home. If he's away, I'll speak to you. Oh, that you could, Eivor. For I am sure this hall would shake with our merry wit. But your accord must be reached with him. You don't strike me as a meek Saxon wife. Do you yet see an ember of my Frankish fire, Ravenwalker? Perhaps it dances in my eyes? Why? I'm wary of rounding up Saxons. Is your husband stolen, drunk, or wayward? He'll be stalking the woodlands today, hunting game and ignoring the vital affairs of Essex. One such affair is why we called for you. If I can find him, I'll remind him of his duties. Ah, such would be a miracle. His favorite haunt is southwest of here. The lavender fields there attract the prey, God help him. With luck, he hasn't been eaten, but I'll return either way. is a godly virtue, Adred. Even this sight... It seems Elderman Beerstan has made this ruin his longhouse.
Kirsten? Ready your as a feast for bears. This is one section you won't kill today. Do not let them charge you. not have survived this ambush without you. You have my gratitude to stumble upon me in my moment of greatest peril. Perhaps you were God sent. I'm Estrid sent. Your wife and the Thanes of Essex both want your balls in a blacksmith's anvil. When do they not? You could return and report that the savage claw took me. Poor Beerstan, his exit pursued by a bear. And make the beast Lord of Essex in your stead. No doubt my Estrid would prefer his velvet paws to my calloused hands. So, who are you? A sellsword? I am Avor of the Raven Clan. You hinted at an alliance for the loan of my unique talents. Blood, yes. Let us return to Colchester at once, and we'll speak more of the delicate matter on my mind. I'm glad you answered my summons. I did not expect such a skilled fighter. It's good I came when I did. 
You lost many men on this hunt. Now then, what was I saying? Good men, all. They will have the proper rights and their families will be cared for. Your people sacrificed much for your sport. They did. There is no balm for my tortured heart. Why did you ask me here? Do you believe in true love, Eivor? I have loved. But have you truly? Has a longing burned in your breast, a sweet lingering pain, paralyzing you with its sting? There's pain enough right. in battle. I do not seek it out in love. I long for it. The thrill of a fight softly won. My wife Estrid lacks fire. She is a fish out of water, cold and dead. She showed great passion when I met her, keeping your thanes in check. Oh, they love her, it is true. Some with too much devotion. And I have not been a good and attentive husband. I have always been a plucked goose in matters of love, and a piss-poor ruler to boot. She strong must be the hand that steers the ship, Eston. My hand would rather tug the cap gut of a well-crafted bow, my eyes narrowing at the sight of prey. Aye, the crown sits heavy on the head. Then let us run wild and free in the woods as the wolves do. Live on our wits, prowl and stalk and feast. You have a romantic way about you, Biston. Do not fret. My guards will not worry you when we are together. You mismark me if you think I'm capable of worry. Have you built your city in the ruins of another? No, these builders are lost to the annals of time. Far advanced of the Saxon hovels of Wattle and Daub, I have ambition to build a great palace myself, with mosaics and balmy courtyards. What stops you? That which stops all but the most creative minds. Coin, imagination, talent. And your people? Is Essex happy? That is a question I never really ponder. I suppose they are. I hope they are. Alfred believes I rule like a chickless hen, flapping and squawking over nothing but the farmer's dinner. He interferes. No, he disapproves. Is that not infinitely worse? But look, we are nearing my hall. I must face the wolves at my door before we discuss your favor to Essex, Abel. It may be I can speed your business along. Ready to help me fend off the spears of their displeasure? Let them speak their woes. I'll advise you if I can. Who is this owl, Beeston, that twitters in your ear? An advisor, nothing more. Oh. Here to help Essex navigate her brewing storms. Now, my dear brethren, Adred, perhaps you will start us off. What troubles you? You're a disgrace, Beeston. Couldn't get a sow pissed in an alehouse. Alfred's men are crawling all over Essex. King Alfred, yes. Though it is within his right, the constant presence of his men is certainly an issue. Alfred will get bored soon enough. He has bigger pikes to bake than are to be found in this stolid backwater. Alfred's forces are only here because of Estrid's failed kidnap. Now that she is safe, they will soon be gone. And you, Wyatt, what do you say? Your preparations for the Lammas Festival. How can you think of spending so much coin when your people are starving? Starving, yes, that is not good. I'll see to it. And Aldrich, do you yap like a she-hound as Adred does? You know my thoughts, Beerston. The feared. 
How can we give men to Alfred for his wars when our harvest suffers day by day? Do they not defend your land? You'll need all the men you can muster to fight the coming wars. The Danes are a great threat when provoked. Those we cannot ally with, we must fight or lose our lands. There! Have I not answered all your questions? You are a stain on this shire, Beerstan. Useless. Useless. That's right. Yet still oh. you haunt my hall. Be gone. I haven't time for your squabbling. You're certainly a better hunter than you are a diplomat, Eivor. I spend my effort where it matters most. All this talk of hunting makes me long for the woods. Your wife awaits, Birsten. Aren't you worried some other man will drench your sheets with his sweat? Ha! Ah, she does as she must. As do I. But you will discover this soon enough. Done the impossible, Dane, returned my errant gander to his coop. My pettish love, such a stormy countenance clouds the sun of my return. Your thanes drank the ale the abbot gifted us, all of it. Now that is a tragedy my heart will not easily overcome. If he looked at me with the same affection he shows for hunting deer, our marriage might have survived. I notice your love has gone sour. Was it fresher than this? <laughs> there is so little difference between love and hate, it's difficult to say where the sourness comes from. So, what do you need of me? Our affairs are more of heart than of state, Eivor. What little passion there was between us faded into bickering long ago. We would have our freedom, Eivor. I from my wife, and my wife from Essex. I'm too sharp a weapon for so soft a task. Why not part and be done with it? Oh, were I a Dane, and divorce as simple as a slit throat. But it's not so easy as that. Explain yourselves, clear and plain, and I will do it. The poetry here is mind mud. We had a plan, a simple plan. A woman lost and a woman found. Some time ago, we paid a Dane to kidnap me and ferry me safely to Francia. As you can see, he did not deliver. He was certainly thorough in other regards. Some Norse can be quick to take coin and slow to earn it. If I give my word, it is not broken. Could we try the kidnap again? Much of the planning is done. It would only take a more trustworthy overseer. It should be a bold venture if we do. Loud and brash and seen by all. During our Lamas festival, merry peasants and guards with wandering eyes. Your return to Frankia would need a swift ship, with a captain ready to leave England. We could ask him. I would have thought his steed and seamen spent. Come find me in the market, Eivor. Our unwelcome guests require food and ale to soften their anger. My wife is a gracious and attentive host, Eivor. The only thing that keeps my braying thanes at bay. And the woman found? A darling Maybud, Alvida, my childhood sweetheart. I left her twenty years ago in Malden to marry my prickled pear. Twenty years? Can an ember so cold be reignited? We can hope. You must fan the flame. Find her, bring her to my lakeside cottage, and light a bonfire there. I will know to come. I believe she lived in the last house in Malden. A small, sweet place where fond memories were made. I will do as you both ask, and ask Freya for success in this love game. Good luck in your endeavors, Eivor. I pray you find my Alvida with a fair face and a yearning heart. Now, should I look for Alvida first, or meet with Estrid at the marketplace? Lean 
hammer. It's way near that human. All of it, I remember a lover from so long ago. Would I? Last house in Malden. All that I should be here. This area is off limits. You have my sister! Is that not enough? Peace, boy. I'm not with these men. I came to speak with your sister. That's all. A day in Essex. Now here's a day riddled with strange portents and happenings. What is your name? I'm Elleridge, the man of this house. Who are you? And why have you come? I'm looking for your sister at the behest of another. Behest? We've got no money to speak of, and my sister is well past the marrying age. Do you know where they're holding Olvida? Yet another stay at the King's pleasure. The prison camp at Brentwood, far to the west. I'll bring her to the lake house north of there. Meet us there if you wish. If you promise you will find her, I will.
last breath. All the way there. Seriously? See me, this will get messy. Oh, was there? God's hero of it. This must be Beeston's love all of They haven't broken her spirit.
Find a key.
should unlock Alvida's cage. They were not gentle with me. Then I will carry you. Who are you? Who risked so much to save me? A friend. Of Elerich's? Is he all right? The poor boy? Not your brother. Someone else who wishes to rekindle a, a friendship. Almost there. My ankle. Oh, the pain. Safe and well. Rest now. Soon you will be up and about again. Alfida! Did they hurt you? Takes more than some cockshine milksops to break my will. Beating a boy after death for stealing bread. I'll not see it done. Growling bellies mean nothing to those pay swords. Ellerich, pay more mind to the world. It is cruel and dark for those who cannot stand up for themselves. Alvida, could we speak in private? He is a good boy, but without a father to guide him, he's grown softer than I'd hoped. You raised him alone. Where were your parents when he was a child? Dead of the plague that came when he was three months born. So to shun your door when you have a babe on your teeth. Now it's your turn. Why did you come for me? I am here at the request of Elderman Beerston. He wonders if you could love him again. Love him? Dear old Beerston, he remembers. He does. I've thought of him sometimes myself. But with my brother to fend for, I could not waste a life mooning. He has thought of nothing but you, Alvida. And with his wife, Estrid, returning to Frankia, he sent me to find you. How it would work between me and him? I'm a poor woman. Have been always. But the Alderman... Oh, God, help me! I'll give him a go. How could I not? Oh, bless. He'll come if you call. At the lighting of the bonfire, he'll ride here to meet you. Ellerich! Come you and sit with us. I have something to say. My... my apple blossom girl. Is it really you? It is. Though crows have left their footfalls around my eyes. They still shine brightly. As when we were children. Has Eivor told you all? Aye, she has. And do you accept me, love? My heart feels like it will burst.
And this young lad is Elderich, Olvid's brother. Hello, your... your... worshipfulness? I am Beerstan, nothing more or less. And you are a fine, strong lad of... how old? Nineteen summers. He's all the family I have, Beerstan. If I'm to stay, you must welcome us both into your heart. We have one half of our bargain done, Beerstan. I will return with news of the other. Does this mean we're leaving Malden? You are, my boy. To live with me in Colchester. Perhaps I can teach you the joy of the hunt. Before you go, Elleridge, I'd suggest a long, slow walk around the lake. Huh. Now to plan the kidnap. Estrid waits for me. Dear Beerston, I cannot believe you would come for me after all these years. I never stopped thinking of you, Alvida. Look at all those delicious fish. Fish here. Being Colchester, a gooseberry in the Elderman's patch. Get the murderer and heathen!
Don't be gentle. <laughs> Shouldn't be seen here. Hey, what? The hood should work. Really? Time will tell if the fire is rekindled. And now my marriage awaits your executioner's sword. Will it not be strange to leave this place? You've lived here half your life. Yes, but what is to keep me here? A loveless union and the dirt mounds of two babes who never took a breath. Have you always missed Frankia? I have. Or rather, I miss the woman I was when I lived there. Somewhat freer and more hopeful. And what of our plan, the great Lama's kidnap? Is this a Christian feast? Yes, it's a wonderful evening. A blessing of the harvest, full of fruits and fires, drinking and dancing. Revelers with muddy minds and glazed eyes. That's good for us. And what of the ship that will sail you home? I know just the one. And her captain is full of fire. Come, I will take you to him. I was there. I saw it. This captain, who is he? Not much more than a boy in his 17th year. Full of youthful bravado. A Saxon? A Dane. Though Adred calls you raiders, he says that you are here to steal England. Some may be. But I've come to settle a stretch of land. I'm not so keen to return to the winters of my birth in Norway. Norway? Ah! It must be beautiful. Rugged and fearsome, and cold as anything, the frozen north. So cold that light hangs in the sky. A road for the Valkyries who carry our dead warriors to their eternal feast. An eternal feast would be a merry end. Oh. <laughs> 
We are here. This is a brother. The captain's name is Rolfer, called Rollo in my tongue. Tell him of our new plan and agree to whatever reward he demands. He may take some convincing, for we did not part on the best of terms. I'll bring him round. By force or persuasion. Just be ready for my signal at the Lammas Festival. Okay, well. See you guys on the next episode.